Hey guys, Rogue Nation here with you today. Um, as you can see on the screen, I'm typing up my motion for uh, default judgment against the sheriff and Dothan. Uh, but the reason I'm coming to you today is that um, we're going to be showing you a video from... It's a uh, update on... This is a public service Social Security Administration... Uh, case so he went to court a couple weeks back and uh, he went with Catherine Henry uh, who for those of you that don't know is a constitutional lawyer uh, constitutional law and she does an interview with him so we're gonna play that for you guys now um, if you guys uh, haven't seen Catherine Henry uh, please go check out her her channel on YouTube I'll leave links in the description um, she's doing good work and as everybody knows we need all the information and all the people in our, our corner as we can get and uh, I believe that, that she's a, uh, a strong ally for freedom so alright guys without further ado we'll get into the video see ya 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello, everybody. I'm Liberty Laurie here with Ocean, or this is a public service. Uh, we're, we're just waiting for Catherine to get back home. Um, but uh, so we thought while we're waiting for her to get back home, uh, I'd, I'd introduce you and he could give you a breakdown of who he is and what a First Amendment auditor is. So go go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for having me on, Lori. I really appreciate it. Uh, I go by uh, I go by Foshin. This is a public service. I'm uh, on social media, I guess. And uh, I maybe I shouldn't assume that everybody knows what a First Amendment audit is or, um, or what I do, but broad strokes, you know, I, I I think that we have a duty to hold the government accountable, and um, there just seems to be a whole lot of nothing on the accountability front going on, and I think I just got fed up with it, and uh, and that's. That's kind of what led me to um, to going out and doing this. I didn't I didn't expect that you know relatively early uh, I would be getting citations for something that is uh, completely lawful. But um, apparently, there's a whole lot that I don't know about uh, about a whole lot. So um, you know, this morning we uh, uh, Catherine and I went. To, uh, went out to uh, Middle District Federal Court in Orlando uh, this morning to um, to address some citations that I was uh, that I was given I can't remember when I was given them but um, they were for my activities inside the Social Security Administration so for everybody that that hasn't seen those videos or doesn't know what's going on I I entered the Social Security Administration silently and I filmed um, and the, uh, Homeland Security, uh, Social Security, they, they took exception to that, uh, and they're, they're trying to charge me under, uh, under a, uh, CFR, um, that appears in, in my opinion, uh, to give me the express permission to do what I was doing in there, so, um, before you not, go on, what's a CFR? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, a CFR is, um, I'm not sure. Not sure. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> well, we can bring that to Catherine then. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's, it's only, you know, there's, there's statutes, um, you know, crimes are usually uh, you know, like there's the Florida statutes that tell tells you everything that is and isn't a crime, uh, and mm -hmm. the, this is this is a level of that without 
um, without it being passed. So this is, uh, these are rules and regulations that are put into place by um, the GSA, the General Services Administration, and they make up rules for all federal property. Um, and uh, I was, I've been accused of, uh, of breaking two of their rules six times. So, okay, so uh, so this is more of an administrative type thing instead of a statutory constitutional issue. Well, um, that's a good question. I, I don't know the that answer to. Seems to be their their attack. Well, why don't you go on with uh, what your what happened um, that day in particular, or today even? You know what what you guys did today and what you experienced or what you've experienced up until now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'll wait for Catherine to kind of get into what happened uh, today, just because I think that she sure. can add some nuance that, that I can't, because there was a lot of lawyer lingo going on and, um, there was a lot of lawyer lingo going on. So the way this came about was, uh, um, for one location, the Delan location, I, I just went in and filmed and nothing, no citation was given. And then I see we've got uh, Rogue Nation uh, in, the, in the room. The other two social security locations I went to with Rogue Nation. And um, we, were, we were not cited at all during any of these events. Uh, and thankfully Rogue hasn't been cited at all. Um, but I was, um, I, I had set up a meeting with the police of uh, the chief of police in the land uh, because I wanted to understand the trespassing that I was issued at Social Security in the land. So I set up an appointment to sit down with uh, with the chief, and um, it was uh, it was a ruse. It was uh, it was just a ruse to get me into the police station uh, to issue me citations. So uh, FPS had. Uh, in, in conjunction with uh, Social Security Administration and the Delane Police Department, they they worked up this ruse to get me in there to to give me these citations that they could have sent in the mail, or or that they could have. So just it sounds like they conspired. <laughs> it 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 sounds conspired like conspired with yeah. each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it certainly sounds yeah. like they're conspiring to violate rights. Um, so. Uh, they must have been must have threw you off when when yeah, they did that. Yeah, yeah, it did, uh, and you can probably tell in the video because uh, I, I videotaped it. But um, you know, there is a good amount of shock when I uh, when I see uh, the homeland security agent, uh, you know, kind of enter the room. But um, I did actually, I had a funny feeling that day. So Stephen Sanders, I'm not sure. I'm, you probably know who he is, Lori, but he's he's the bit. veteran that arrested at that Social Security Administration about two weeks after I went there. Um, but I I had a little I had a funny feeling uh, that day, so I, I just called Stephen up because I know he lives local, and he you know he came there with me in case something happened. Um, thankfully, something happened that uh, you know I, I wasn't actually uh, caged for. Um, but it's nice to know that uh, you know that that you've got other liberty lovers that that have your back. People like Rogue, people like the Liberty Cause, um, you know, people like Catherine that that have their yeah. own stuff going on and take the time out of their their day to, to help me and in, in federal court. So uh, I can't I can't express how how grateful I am for that. Yeah. And as uh, the Liberty Cause says, Homeland Security is just another unconstitutional federal agency. True. And so you're you're getting targeted by by people that have or or people in government that have don't even have any authority to do it be in the position they're in. And this is, I mean, you're by far not the only person this is going or happening to. And so our hope is by sharing your story and having some, you know, with Catherine, having the legal background of it and to help guide you through that legalese, you know, because, 
you know, we're just not smart enough to understand this stuff. <laughs> I mean, that's what they think and that's what they want us to think. And um, I, it, it's very rare that you're going to find somebody that can't understand it, but they, you know, the time needs to be taken to be given the opportunity to understand it instead of this almost gaslighting stuff that seems to happen more often than not when you start asking questions. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, as a first amendment auditor, you start asking anybody in government questions. It's, it's very rare that you run into those good solid interactions anymore, which is a tremendous wrongdoing on their part in our part for not making them used to interaction with us. Because if they were used to yeah. us always coming in and checking in on them, they wouldn't be so guarded in feeling that. Yeah, they I, have I agree some with you. On that, I, 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 I totally agree. This is all our fault. Um, you know, the the government gets some blame, right? Because they're the ones that are doing it. But oh, yeah. This is our fault for not having our our boot on their throat um, for. For, yeah. well, you know, since, since, you know, since the constitution, you know, since the alien and sedition acts, you know, what, where, where, ha, where have our boot, where has our boot been? Uh, because they're out of control and they, it's more than out of control now where they're, they're openly flaunting their lawlessness. They're wild animals on the loose. And we've got to write them in and it's going to take education on our part and and then coming together in in our respective communities and saying hey you know this needs to stop our constitution says this boom you know it's just going to take take a little time and it looks like Catherine made it i'll let her throw mm -hmm. herself on the screen when she's ready but um yeah, so it will let Catherine bring. Sorry to everybody for not saying hi. I'm at the beach oh. apparently with no hair. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> sure what's going on. How do I get turned on? You, you can go into video and blur your background too. I'm going to switch with you. Uh huh. Sure. How does it automatically assign me a beach? That I, I did that. That's my fault. Oh, I figured you'd want to be on the beach, but I didn't think it would be <laughs> remove my hair, cut your hair off. <laughs> well, I can't figure out how to uh, change it while we're already going. So I guess no hair it is for today. But <laughs> oh, now you made Potion jealous, and he's going to try to go find a beach. Um, <laughs> I've got the I've got a beautiful background. You're right. You have you have an actual real background that doesn't erase your hair. So, all right. So let me see if I can turn up my volume. Hi guys. Sorry I'm late. Um, this looks totally different. Our streaming software you, apparently decided to up uh, upgrade itself, and nothing looks like it's supposed to. So, uh, anyway. Um, where, uh, well, for those of you who might just be stumbling across my channel for the first time, hi, I'm constitutional attorney Catherine Henry, and this, of course, is our Restore Freedom Weekly episode, season two, episode 18 already. And uh, Liberty Lori was uh, awesome enough to get us started with our special guest today, uh, Foshin, who has, of course, his own YouTube channel. This is a public service. So if you haven't already done that, please go check his channel out. Uh, hello to the Liberty Cause, long time no see, um, and to uh, several other friends of ours. I can't even say words today. Um, so, oh, well, thanks for telling everybody I got back, Mike. Uh, way to let the cat out of the bag. Uh, he did. <laughs> I was going to say, he did tell tell me. I was I was watching, but Potion was talking, so I didn't want to. I figured yeah, you'd he, pop up when you pop up. He told everybody. <laughs> he put it in the the youtube comments well, that's okay i told them that we were waiting for you to get home so or get set set up so it's all good um so um at any rate did you guys get to the point of um potion were you able to tell the background about who you are what you do and what led you to the what, case 
yeah, I think you that go, we're. I don't mind staying, but do you want to just have the two of you so that the focus can be on? Sure, we can put you in timeout. Um, let me you back in. Okay. You know how much Let's you love being it. on videos, but um, oh, and she just threw herself away. <laughs> She's gone. She didn't even wait for me to respond. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so were you able to do that or do we need to cover kind of the basics of, uh oh, I think you froze because you haven't blinked in a very long time. Can you hear me okay? Oh, we lost him. All right. So, wow, this is, this is uh, fantastic today. We got all kinds of uh, weird tech glitching going on and we lost our special guest of the hour. And I had to be late trying to hustle back from the federal district court in, uh, in downtown Orlando. So let's see here. Well, Can you hear? Okay, I'm back, bouncing back out. I just didn't want to leave you alone. Um, so I'll bounce out when he comes back. Potion, can you hear us? You might not be ready. It might take we'll a minute this. for it to load. Yeah, I'll just leave it on there. Um, so guys, um, it was an interesting day. Um, well, let me ask you this, Lori, um, did he go into any of what happened today or? or... Uh, no, he felt because of there's so much legal lingo going on that it was going to probably come across better. He gave the gist of what happened and what he's being charged with. Um, oh, well, I'm the glad very you gist. The gist of what he's charged with because I'm still waiting to find well, out. We did. He, he said something to do with a CFR, so when I asked him what it was, we thought maybe you would be the better one to answer what a CFR is. Yes, yeah, so um, I can't even think. I think it's Code of Federal Regulations is the, the acronym CFR. Um, but let me put it this way, guys. Uh, Code of Federal Regulations. Regulations are not promulgated uh, through the legislative process by Congress they're put together by government agencies in other words the uh, uh, executive branch so as we all know back to constitutional law 101 there's a separation of powers and the only branch of government that is allowed to make laws is the legislative branch or at the federal level that would be congress so you have these rules or regulations um there we go that was an interesting thing. We got you on there twice. Um, can you hear us okay, Potion? Oh, that was interesting. We heard heard you a little bit. Your video was better, but your audio was cut out. That was unusual. Um, I will, uh, you might just have to use sign language, hold up different, you know, yes, no, <laughs> 52. Um, write a note, but you write it backwards so it can be read on the camera. Oh, yeah, that would be. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, the, uh, quite the thing there. Well, I'll just kind of finish describing for people. So basically, what he's charged with is um, supposedly a violation of two CFRs, Code of Federal Regulations. So two federal regulations. One of them is basically he didn't follow their directions and follow their signage. And the other one was that he was um video recording or, or taking photography in a federal building so um the thing is it's all about the same incident because the not following directions and signage was about photography the thing is if you actually look at the language of the federal regulation involved it's cfr uh 41 i think the citation would be 41 cfr uh 102 74.420. Hey, all right. Um, no, I don't have it written on my ceiling, but um, I was going off memory there. <laughs> but uh, and the other one about not following the directions or placards or whatever posters uh, would be uh, 41 CFR uh, uh, 1, 102 74.385. Now it's it's the same transaction or occurrence. It's basically the same issue, but at three different locations. And so they gave him one charge 
uh, of each of those uh, two CFRs at each of three locations for a total of six, um, six charges. The problem with the CFR, there's a couple things. Number one is, if you read it, there's section A, B, and C. A and B talk about needing permission from the government, whether you're uh, video, uh, taking video for commercial purposes. Oh no, why did that happen? My screensaver just went on. Okay, hopefully you guys can see and hear me okay. Um, that has never happened before uh, during a video. Uh, Lori, I can't, hold on. Can you say okay. So oh, we can hear back up. Okay. What? You can hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Because you were muted for a second and then I was thinking my audio wasn't working, but you're just trying to fake me out by muting yourself and talking. Yep. I mean, I read lips and I'm going to bounce out. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> just testing you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so at any rate, um, man, I'm trying to get my mind back to... Um, not having my screen frozen. Um, so with those three um, three parts of the CFR, the first two are talking about whether you're, you're taking video for commercial purposes or non, and I don't remember which one's which, but say A is for commercial purposes, B is for non-commercial purposes. C is um, talking about, regardless of that, if you have for, for news purposes, um, if you are essentially serving as a member of media and you are sharing information, um, about the government. You could be in their foyer, you could be in their entryways. Um, I don't have that print off, but um, Foshan is your, let's see if you're, oh, you're frozen. Dang it. Um, I'm frozen? Yeah, you keep freezing. Yeah, I heard you say I, I'm frozen and that was the only clear thing I heard. Yeah, lobby corridors are the two other places that you can film. In, in auditoriums, but uh, don't have auditoriums. So you said um, corridors, lobbies, um, and what else did you say? It's building entrances, lobbies, foyers, corridors, or auditoriums for news purposes. Okay. And so, and just to be clear, guys, it doesn't say that you need permission. In fact, the way the law works is there's there's statutory construction as they call it in, in in the judicial branch right so their job is to apply uh the the law to the facts not to write it or rewrite the law but to apply it and they call it interpretation well if you need to interpret a statute then i guess do so but generally speaking you go with what the words are and then you apply the words of the law to the facts well here I'm going to pause on the word law for a minute, but anyway, we'll look at the CFR and this regulation uh, specifically has three subsections. The first two are talking about needing permission from the government agency involved. The third one does not mention needing permission. What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? That you don't need permission. Yes, it is common sense that we apply to that very situation. And I'm so sorry, guys, that my graphics are freaking out in the background. I'll figure out how to turn off uh, that for the next show. But at any rate, um, it is, oh, we got him back. Um, good, Lori's managing all that. Uh, we just want to keep you guys on your toes. We're going to play a little uh, uh, musical chairs in our videos today. Um, Oh, I'm so bummed about the connection right now, Foshan, because uh, I don't know if you can hear and see us okay, but you are not blinking a whole heck of a lot. And uh, when you do, um, it's very, very choppy. So um, anyway, hopefully we can have them on board. I wanted to have a good dialogue between uh, myself and Foshan today on this case because it's, it's not an unusual case in many respects. Um, and it's a necessary case in some respects. And it's also a, what happens now? What can I do? What are my options kind of thing? And I really need him to hear that <laughs> discussion. Um, so hopefully at the very least he can hear me even if we can't see or hear him okay. So um, throughout, um, Foshan, have you been able to hear me okay?
Well, at least he's kind of smiling in this in this frozen image. So um, hopefully he can hear us. But at any rate, we'll just let him uh, see, you know, see if it. Uh, Foshin, if you get back in and you have, uh, you know, good connection again, by all means, jump in and start talking. Because uh, I, I might not realize that you're actually good to go and, and can talk again in here. So until then, Lori gets to hold your spot. Uh, she's super excited about it. She's trying to inch off screen uh, ever so slightly. She started in the middle and she's like, by the time the show's over, I'm going to be off. It's just a purple shirt on the side, you'll see. <laughs> oh, hey, at least Restore Freedom's purple. So, um, All right. So, oh, we got you a little bit better there. Beautiful I don't know what's going on. What's that? I don't know what's going on. I like the background. Oh yeah, we love his background. But uh it's um it's it's the I don't know, the NSA or CIA. <laughs> that okay. in the terrible internet out here, yep. That too, that too. But they're probably there's, there's behind trade offs, right? Yeah. They're, they're behind the lack of in, in necessary infrastructure. They want to make sure you don't end up with some sort of fiber internet and uh, can totally whoop them. Anyway, so, all right, guys. So it's what's important to realize um, about these uh, CFRs is, number one, any kind of law, rule, regulation. Uh, look at the, the language of the law, the rule, the executive order, whatever it is the ordinance, look at the language and see if, if they're trying to use it against you, if the government's trying to use it against you, look at the language of their own document first. That's where I always start. Okay, well, even if I don't agree that this executive order or this regulation or this rule, it would be applicable to me, even if I think that it's unconstitutional for them to enforce it as though it's the same as a law, it might be easier to speak their own language and use literally their own document, their own order, their own rule, their own regulation against them. So that's where I was suggesting to Foshin that he start. Uh, and that's because this CFR, now let's keep in mind, um, these are mere suggestions and not technically legal advice in nature. Although I am licensed to practice in two federal district courts and the United States Supreme Court, I am not a practicing attorney in the middle district of Florida federal district court. So. Now that I have all that, fun, yes. whatever, you, disclaimer out there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where Foshin, if we had a great connection and he was a super bad smart ass, he would have been like, what? Oh, I never would have. Yeah, anyway. So, um, but poor connection and all, he's, he's going to give me uh, not that much of a hard time and I'll be able to move on from that. So um, anyway, screen saver again. Sorry, guys. So um from now on i guess during the shows i have to move my mouse who knew i didn't know that was a thing but um so cfrs if you look at the language of the one that he's charged with now keep in mind i'm assuming he got to the point of being able to tell you guys that he's a first amendment auditor he's he's a youtuber he shares information not for his own benefit he's not just well even so i mean even if he's just an influencer that would still be a member of the media but the dude has far more followers than I do on, on YouTube, at least, and uh, didn't start that way. But, you know, anyway, <laughs> it's there now. So he is providing a service. In fact, uh, some may say a public service. Um, sorry, couldn't help the humor. I am my father's daughter. But uh, I mean, what clearer information could there be that he's going to post this information on a uh, YouTube channel called This is a Public Service, where he teaches people about same kinds of things that I do, but from a practical standpoint and has those real life encounters with government agencies and shows uh, the pitfalls of how they forget about the Constitution and where they need to do better. At any rate, um, that is news. That is media. That is a First Amendment protected issue, um, let alone just the speech aspect, but the media aspect is a separately protected provision of the First Amendment. So, man, I start talking about First Amendment and then viewership drops off. What the heck? Fine. Screw all you guys. We didn't want you <laughs> joining the talk about the Constitution either. Uh, they stuck around for CFRs, but didn't care to hear about the Constitution. That blows my mind. Anyway, so um, so that's a thing. But here's something else. 
if you're charged with something, let's say you're charged with, wow, I'm going to have to really every two minutes, keep moving my mouse. That's going to get lovely. Um, if you uh, are charged with a CFR, if you're charged with any kind of rule or regulation, first ask the question, what law claims that violating this rule or regulation is an offense, is a crime, is a civil infraction? What is the law that makes it a crime? Because only the legislative branch, in this case, Congress, can delineate and determine what crimes are. Only they can do that. So let's assume that they didn't get it wrong. That's a big assumption. But let's assume Congress didn't get it wrong. And they, you know, were constitutional in setting up how these agencies are and, and how these regulations are put into place. Did Congress even give permission for the government to charge a violation of the CFRs as a criminal offense or as a civil infraction? Well, if you go to a Google Scholar or if you have something like Fast Case or Case Maker, I don't even know what the Michigan State Bar offers to me anymore. Uh, I always use the free stuff. Let me put it that way. But if you type in and do a search for cases about that CFR, you find like one, maybe two cases ever in the history of the U.S. for, for federal court. That's it. That's all I found. And that was as recent as yesterday. And what do they say? Well, the one case was specifically talking about the fact that in 20, as of 2018, not a single court has ever had a case where the CFRs that Foshin is being charged with have ever been used as the basis for criminal charges against anyone. Because the CFR itself doesn't say, and violation of this, uh, violation of this CFR is a criminal offense punishable by 90 days in jail and a $5,000 fine or whatever. It does not say that. So not only does it not say that, what he was charged with, supposedly these, these CFRs, that's all they put on there. They didn't put on there what law it is. In fact, he's not even told at this point, if it's a civil infraction, if it's a misdemeanor, we were kind of you know, alluded to the fact that it might be a, a misdemeanor, but we were told we don't know if it's a petty misdemeanor. We don't know if it's uh, class B or class A or whatever. Uh, and, and that's ridiculous. So I know the legal lingo and I've been a public defender in two different states. I'm licensed in federal courts. So even though I'm not licensed at this particular local federal district court, I'm, I'm not an idiot. I can figure things out, but it was like talking in circles with these people. So as of right now, Foshin has had two court dates a month apart and still as of yet and received six citations. And as of yet, with all the notices to appear, so now 12 notices to appear and six citations, Nowhere on there has he been told what the law is that he supposedly broke. Nowhere in there does it say uh, the, the name of the judge assigned to his case. It just says U.S. District Court Magistrate Judge. Nowhere on there does it say whether it's a civil infraction or a criminal case or, quite frankly, if who the two parties are. I don't even, I don't have copies of it right here, but... I'm pretty sure it doesn't even say like, you know, the people of the United States versus Foshin's real legal name. I, I don't even think it says that. There's no caption. Um, it doesn't tell him what the possible penalties are. It doesn't tell him what the elements of the offense are. There's literally nothing on there. So what do you do? Because there's rules of criminal procedure. There's rules of civil procedure. So for him to defend himself, he has to be able to know what rules apply. And he doesn't even know the nature of the case. How about this? What if he wanted to have me come in as pro hoc vice, or he wanted some other attorney who's already li licensed in this particular federal district court to represent him? 
he doesn't have a court file number. He can't have an attorney file an appearance, which they openly admitted to in this unofficial meeting today because there's no court file number. He can't file a motion to dismiss or a motion for any other violation of his rights because there's no court file number. What else is missing, Potion? I had the whole laundry list and I can't remember now. There were so many things deficient with your charges. Yeah, and I don't know if that left me more hopeful or less hopeful, you know, because you, you, these things should be pretty dialed in at this point. I, I would imagine it's been on the, the code's been on the books for whatever period of time or whatever CFR that they're in that courtroom adjudicating. Um, I, I guess I, my question maybe should have been, what were they looking for? You know, were they looking for me to come in there and just say, uh, you know, I'm so sorry. Uh, just let me know what I owe you. Because I, I, I don't know, even if I had said that in today's, what would have happened? Nothing. I, I, and that's exactly yeah, it. it. So, so just to be clear, guys, I point blank asked the, the fill-in prosecutor, let's say he decides he might be willing to, you know, just not fight it. He doesn't want to fight it. It's not worth his time or, you know, paying a fine. How does he know what it is that you're asking him to do? If he wanted to say, sure, I'm just whatever, whatever you want to do. What does that look like? What is he actually pleading to? What are you asking? Are you asking for a fine? If so, how much? Are you asking for jail time? If so, how much? And he said, I don't know. I'm not even sure which statute applies to know what the possible, the maximum possible penalties are. He thinks it might be 5,000. He thinks there might be jail time, but then he wasn't sure. So how, what was the point of Foshan having to go to court today? That's the, that's the question at hand. What's the point of him driving all the way down into downtown Orlando and dealing with all security and giving up all the rest of his rights and freedoms and having to turn over his state ID just to get into the building where he was court ordered to go anyway? How does that work, by the way? What if you had gotten mugged on the way there? And if you don't appear, they're going to issue a bench warrant for you. So you show up to go to court and they say, nope, we're not going to let you in because you don't have a photo ID. And then you say, dude, I was, I was literally just, I was just mugged. I was robbed. I, they stole my wallet. What do you want me to do? The hearing is right now. I'm still here. They would say, uh, how, how it sucks to be you, but you know. We're not going to let the judge know that you're here. We're just going to not let you in the building. I, man, I wish you had a better connection because I want to just hear your, you know, I, I was lo I'm looking forward so much to a back and forth on this important topic. But um, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's like one of those movies that you make because you just take a bunch of stills and then you just... <laughs> You flip them back and forth. Um, can you still hear me okay? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, hey, that I actually heard you just fine. So hearing is, is really the most important thing there. So, yeah, what do you, maybe I missed something, uh, Foshan. What did you think? Do you think that my questions were pretty point blank about what the um, expected uh, outcome would be? What, what they're looking for from you, what they're asking you to do? Yeah, I think that you were, uh, I'm going to move a little bit and see if it helps. Um, I think you were, you were very direct and uh, thank God, thank God you were there to be direct because I wouldn't have even known to, you know, ask some of the questions that you did. You know, you prepared me well enough to go in there and, you know, we were, we were going to file a motion to dismiss the case today, but um, again, we didn't even go in front of a judge. So, um, you know, it, I, I guess I can't even speak to how, how valuable it was having you there just because this doesn't seem like the way that things are supposed to go. 
You know what I mean? It, it just doesn't seem like this is the way that it's supposed to happen. Uh, and it's happening nonetheless. I'm, I, I can't say how grateful I am to have somebody that cares, you know, that, you know not somebody that I paid, uh, you know, whatever to be in the courtroom for 15 minutes who looked at my case about as long as that prosecutor probably did today, which was zero. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and you didn't even paint me with chocolate chip cookies. I see uh, Mr. Liberty Cause is calling me the cookie monster over here in the comments, and no one paid me with chocolate chip cookies. I mean, come on. If I'm going to get fat what? again, I might as well be able to eat chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> I might um, have some for you there. Okay, I'm going to be holding one of you two to the cookies. That's all I know. <laughs> So that's the thing, and if nothing else, let me ask you guys this. Those of you who are watching or listening live now or even catching the replay on this, um, on this I'm hearing uh, my echo. I'm hearing my echo. Where is it coming from? Where is it? I can't tell. Let me see. We still have an echo. Oh, now I can't hear you at all. We, I can see you, Foshan, but I can't hear you at all. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We lost Foshan again. And uh, Lori is sharing the lovely cookies that came from the Howard County Observer. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that, but that's just making me hungry. Lori, take them away. Take them away. They were real cookies. I'd be like, shut them up. <laughs> right now. Hey, Foshan, do we have your audio back? Oh, oh. Did, no, did you maybe accidentally hit the mute button? He's muted now, unmuted now. Yeah, I'm not, oh no. I'm not sure what the option would be. I don't know if it lets you refresh or anything because your picture, okay, yeah. All right, so he's going to hop out and jump back in. Um, <laughs> So the thing I wanted to tell you guys is no matter who you are, most of you are probably not going to be attorneys. You could still help out because let me tell you, uh, I don't have the extra gas money to go into a trip to Orlando just for fun to hang out at the federal district court. But what I do have is I do have a passion for supporting the constitution, for defending the constitution and for supporting and defending the very people that are there to help me when I need it. And uh, Foshin, in his pursuit of justice and liberty and fairness and the Constitution, is um, now my computer's telling me it's time to eat lunch. Seriously, I'm, the technology and the food is all stacked against me today. Um, so if anybody wants to do Uber Eats and get me some chocolate chip cookies, I mean, I'm here. But anyway, um, so I, um, I went today because of two things. Number one, when you have someone be there for you and show up for you, I mean, shoot, it's been at least three times that I could think of. Um, well, when I was nervous to go to the state capitol and speak on House Bill 543 here in the state of Florida that um, fortunately ended up making it through, but was being announced as this constitutional carry bill that clearly did not support or actually defend the Constitution, uh, was far short of that. Uh, Foshin, I'd never met him before. Foshin uh, went there with us and even photographed or videoed my speech. My camera was um, not behaving very well. And it was very comforting to know that there are just other freedom fighters there for the same purpose. And lo and behold, a little while later in February, when we had our hearing uh, at the special magistrate level here in the city of Ormond Beach, fighting the unconstitutional and illegal actions of the city of Ormond Beach and their officials. He was one of the few people that showed up that day. And then fast forward to a few weeks later when uh, April 10th came and the city 
was saying they were going to literally show up and dig up my pavers, my, my shipping containers, my privacy fence, and take it all without paying one dime of just compensation as required under the eminent domain uh, provisions of our constitution. He was one of the few people that showed up and parked on my pavers, parked in front of my privacy fence and my shipping containers and, and was on the front lines. And in fact, was one of the few people that showed up to uh, the, the police department and neighborhood improvement division with the judge's uh, order of stay at the time to make sure that they were getting a copy of it and that the city could not claim that they didn't know and then just send some contractor over to tear up my homestead and when we just had a hearing this last friday on our case on uh the actual hearing at the uh appellate court level the circuit court level on my hearing for my emergency motion to um for the stay and for the relief from the orders uh he was uh one of again only a couple people that showed up to support us and that means something that means a lot because even a seasoned freedom fighter like myself, I get all kinds of anxiousness and anxiety and, um, you know, just stress from having to deal with this and even having to walk into a courthouse because I'm having to give up a whole bunch of my rights just to walk through the door and have my day in court. Um, otherwise, you know, it's like you got to pick which battles you're going to focus on at that moment. And in those moments, you're focusing on the underlying thing that you're there for right not all the procedural things are they're, they're doing to violate your rights uh afterwards so at any rate it's just it's nice to know there's other freedom fighters there so i tell you that because you guys you can do so much you can uh take some time and take you know take time out of your day go to just one thing if you even go one to one thing a year show up to somebody who's a freedom fighter, who's not too far away from you, that you can show up to their, you know, to speak on their behalf at a city council meeting in the evening, or if they have a hearing in the morning uh, at a local courthouse, whatever the fight is that they're doing to fight for their freedom or somebody else's, show up, just be in their corner on that and let them know, let the government know that there's a watchful eye and let the other person know that they're not in this alone because we got to band together. Otherwise, the government will continue to trample all over us. But aside from that, um, I have a passion for the Constitution and for defending it. And I took an oath many times to defend it. So the more the more Foshin and I talked yesterday about the ridiculousness of, I just figured I just didn't have the right paperwork in front of me or that he and I just had to have, you know, we just needed to wait till we had the opportunity for a sit down for me to really get filled in and understand. No, that wasn't the case at all. It was that there is no, there was nothing to fill me in on. He doesn't have a statute that he's charged with. He doesn't have the nature of the offense. If it's, a civil infraction or um, a misdemeanor or a felony. He doesn't have the statute. He doesn't have the possible penalties. He doesn't, he's not even had an arraignment. I literally had to corner the prosecutor and let him know like, hey, at what point is he gonna have an arraignment? So he's not even gonna necessarily be told if they take any further action, if they do, when they do. So it's a big waiting game. This stuff is not okay, guys. If this happens to you, fight back. Don't just take it. Do anything you can to put yourself on the record in court or uh, write, you know, file pleadings with the court, file motions. Uh, do whatever you need to do to raise your defenses, to raise your issues and have your voice heard. Now, the problem here for him is that uh, even if he writes a motion, I don't know how he would get it filed. I do have an idea uh, that he can at least get it into um, the government system, but not necessarily the court filing. But that's because we were given finally somebody's email address somewhere in the court. Um, but, you know, aside from that, he has no, literally no way to file anything in, in their court filing system because he wasn't even given a court case number. He's just given a citation number and the court filing system doesn't allow you to, to, um, to file with just the 
basically the police citations. So do whatever you guys can to know your rights, to know the basics, due process. You have the right to notice an opportunity to be heard. That includes when the government's coming after you, that's to know exactly what law they're saying you broke to know what part of the law, to, to know what facts they are saying constitute you breaking that law. What is the probable cause there? You have the right to know what they're asking for, what what the, the maximum possible penalty in terms of if it's jail or prison time, if it's a fine or some other kind of uh, sentence of some kind, what the maximum allowed is by law, and you have the right to know what they're asking what is the prosecutor asking you to do? You have the right to know what your rights are. Before you can have your life, liberty, or property taken away, you are guaranteed due process of law. You are guaranteed, you are guaranteed the right to counsel. You are guaranteed the right to know the charges against you. You are guaranteed the right to make the government prove their case. Beyond a reasonable doubt, certainly in criminal situations, if you're facing possible jail time, you are guaranteed the right to an attorney. Now, Foshan, I don't know if you caught that, but at one point he said, well, you know, if it's this other kind of maybe like not quite a, a criminal case, but just if we just keep it as a citation, you know, then you might have possible jail time. But, you know, so I said, oh, so then you do have an, a, right, a right to have an attorney. And he said, no, not necessarily. If you have, if you are facing possible jail time, even if they're not asking for it, but it's a possibility, you damn well have the right to an attorney. Yeah, in that same scenario, Catherine, he he also let us know that we would be deprived uh, deprived of a, a trial by jury. You're right. I forgot about that. Yeah, he didn't seem to say. Um, I brought up a, a few times that. He mentioned something about a, a bench trial and I said, or jury trial. And he's like, well, you don't necessarily have a right to that. Sure you do. Every criminal case, you're guaranteed to have a right to a trial by your peers before your life, liberty or property can be taken away from you. And he seemed to think that that's just a dispensable, like no big deal requirement of the constitution. And the sad thing is, guys, this guy was actually more informative and probably more cooperative and open and, and you know, like seemingly trying to do the right thing than what it seems like the other prosecutor who's the main prosecutor in the case was doing. But yet here we are. So this is not uh, a fluke. This is This is the way that they do business. Now, let me tell you this, guys. I started to say you guys should look up, if you're charged with any kind of regulation or whatever, look up that exact regulation in in court cases. Go to the law, local law library, go to Google Scholar, look up Fast Case or Westlaw or Lexis and, and search in all different kinds of ways and see if you can find other cases where it has been charged. This is not a thing. Like, it's not a thing and they can't just make it up and make all of a sudden it to, to be a criminal, a federal criminal offense to, um, you know, to take pictures in the lobby of a building when that's not what the law says. And it's not even what the CFR says. So just make sure that you guys know what these basic rights are that you have and that you know that you have the right to notice an opportunity to be heard. That means you have the right to know what the heck the hearing is scheduled for. It has to have some sort of name. He was scheduled today for a hearing and last month for a hearing that had no name. And in fact, he was actually scheduled in a way that he didn't get the opportunity to go on the record. The judge never took the bench in the courtroom. So I'm not sure that there's ever going to be any record that he showed up other than in some handwritten notes by a prosecutor from the fill in prosecutor to the main prosecutor. It's just absurd to me. Um, so I suppose it'd be a good idea to kind of touch on what are some of the options? Well, let's, let's, 
think about in this particular scenario, what he was told is that they're, um, he, they're going to recommend that the office of the um, U.S. Attorney's Office reviews the charges or reviews the file or whatever wording he used to see if they want to actually um, essentially enter a complaint, a criminal complaint against him. If they decide not to, then we were given the runaround about if he'll ever get notified. Right? Is that your take on it? And, and I won't be notified. Uh, I think that was what we, we heard. Unless I reach out to them to, to find out from the clerk or the disposition that there, there will be no notification, which, oh, okay, I, I'd be okay with that <laughs> as, long as, as long as it was, you know, a dismissal, you know what I mean? But the fact that I left there today not knowing what I just sat through and not knowing what I'm potentially, what's next? Is the arraignment next? I mean, do we even know that that's the next step? You right. Know? Right. So that's the thing. Without having had an arraignment, I don't understand how they think that they could have even accepted some sort of plea from you or accepted a payment of some kind of fine or fee from you because you haven't been advised of the charges and you haven't been advised of the possible penalties. So those are basic due process 101. It's just absurd to me. So what was it called? The very first thing you have to have in a criminal case is an arraignment where you are notified of your charges and the possible penalties and your rights. And the Constitution is pretty clear. The cases on this are pretty clear. You have the right to an attorney right from the arraignment on. So they're acting in this quasi-judicial, like pre-arraignment arena that doesn't exist on paper. There's nothing to appeal, apparently, because there's not even a court file number. Um, wow, you were good at typing that from your phone in your car. That was awesome. <laughs> Phones, remember? Oh, yeah. Well, still, I was like trying to figure out how to talk and type that in an answer in a minute, and I still couldn't even get it out. So, um, so, and what is the link? Somebody's asking for the link. The link to her. I'm not sure. Those of you that are asking for a link, I just don't know what link it is, if that was already addressed or not. Um, oh, wow. Apparently my chat stopped scrolling on me. So you might have gotten your answer because I was like a half an hour ago that you asked that. Okay. So at any rate, um, if you didn't get an answer, ask it maybe in a different way and we'll see if we can understand what the question is and get it uh, answered for you. But um, so at this point, it's it's not clear. I, I asked him point blank if he would receive written notification, if Ocean would receive written notification if they set, decided not to pursue it or essentially dismiss the citations. And uh, at first he said, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. That's what he said. And then he talks it through and then he ends up saying, well, you know, actually, I don't know if you would. And then you might have to make a phone call and he hems and haws and he goes through all this. Um, and in the end, it's like, well, OK, so maybe not. So maybe it's just going to be if at some point and we don't have a time frame either. So it's not like uh, we were told, gosh, if it's been 30 days and you don't hear anything from the court, you could call then and see if the case has been dismissed. No, it's just left totally wide open. So uh, that's one option. A second option is if they decide to pursue charges and they want to file um, um, you know, a complaint or an information, um, but it basically get get it going, get charges going. And then supposedly at that point, they would schedule it for an arraignment. Um, but again, it's, you know, and in theory, then they're going to have to tell him of the court date and uh, time and, and place and purpose, and that he has the right to an attorney. But it, this is the most kangaroo court. Stuff, and I'm involved in a bunch of kangaroo court stuff myself, but this is ridiculous. So um, basically at this point, because it's all left open, I guess, you know, one option you have is just to file some sort of, 
I don't know how you would technically file, but you have um, a court reporter or the judge's secretary, somebody, some judicial assistant or something, you have her email address uh, it, that now we at least have some point of contact in writing. You could send a motion to her, uh, you know, laying out that it should be dismissed and why. You could perhaps just pose it in the body of an email that she supposedly then forwards on to the prosecutor. Um, that would, in theory, start the conversation directly with you and the prosecutor. Um, you're kind of CYA in, in both of those scenarios by raising all the constitutional issues. Uh, you could just kind of wait and, and let them determine what they're going to do. Um, instead of taking the, you know, the offensive approach and fighting all these fights, you could wait to see if they're just going to do the right thing and, and drop it. Um, and then if they don't, then, um, you know, defend it in the criminal sense that way. Um, you know, of course, at that point, one option would be filing a motion to dismiss. Um, but it would be a little bit different, um, at least a little bit different layout, perhaps, in terms of um, comparing the civil motion to dismiss versus the criminal motion to dismiss. But, you know, those are at least some of the options that you have. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you have any, does that make sense what the options would be? Yeah, it makes sense. I, I, I think that whatever proactive approach I can take, um, I'd like to take it, you know what I mean? If, I don't even know if I can bring a motion, you know what I mean? Because I don't have a case number unless I'm, you know, unless I reference those numbers in each one of the citations, you know? So. Yeah, and that's what I would do is I would reference the citation numbers if you were going to go that route. Um, and then just say court file number, none assigned yet. <laughs> I don't, yeah. You know, I'd like to be hopeful about it, Catherine. You know, I'd like to say, well, you know, maybe every step so far, they've just gotten it wrong and they, they just they have trouble reading. But surely, surely the prosecutor can read. But I don't, you know... I don't think that's a wise way to go. I need to assume that these people have no intention of reading anything, and no interest in reading anything that's written. So um, I think somebody said in the, in the comments, it's a game and it's operating the way that it should for them. So. Yeah, Mr. Liberty Cause asks, what is there to dismiss at this point? It does actual charges have been filed and that's the thing that's what i was trying to ascertain and i wanted to get it somehow some sort of a record of that is there a charge is there a case what would be dismissed if there isn't a case open that was kind of the premise here like well then what why was he ordered to appear if there's no case you're not just, or you can't be ordered to appear if there's no underlying court case, but he was ordered to appear twice now. So it's, you know, at this point, I would say if they try to call you back in and it's not clearly delineated as an arraignment, I would put something in writing and send it back to them and say, you're violating my rights to due process. You've already brought me in for two of these hearings that apparently are nothing. So I, I refuse to keep coming back and wasting my time and my resources when I'm, I'm denied the right to get in front of a judge even when I get there. Um, so I'm just looking here, were there any other questions? Um, okay. So, um, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so Lori put up your, um, your YouTube channel. Um, do you have any videos of what was happening then? Uh, yeah, all, I'm not sure if I've got a social security playlist, but all the videos are there. They all say social security in the name. Um, uh, I'll, I'll create a playlist today and just throw them in a playlist. So if you go to my YouTube, you can just go to the playlist and you look for Social Security. 
Uh, some of it's probably inside the Deland one, but yeah, if anybody wants to email me, uh, letters of Foshan at gmail.com. Uh, Foshan is P H O C I O N. And uh, just to be clear, guys, too, that, um, well, let me, let me put it this way. Um, Foshan, if you think about it, once you make that playlist, my brain is going too hard into the legal stuff to come back out to the techie stuff. But if you, if there's a way that you could send me a link to that playlist that I could share uh, in my, on my YouTube community page, um, then we can provide that to people as well. And, and I'll probably throw it on tele, my tele, telegram channel and some of the other social media um, that plays nicely with YouTube. Um, so people can, kind of see what they're what they're looking at but basically this isn't even a situation where he's being accused of you know disturbing people or uh disrupting the the services that are being provided or you know trespassing or you know being in a place where he's not allowed to be um he's literally being um uh it's alleged that he was taking photos and he wasn't allowed to take photos period on government property which is not a thing that's not a thing so i mean this is big stuff guys because the whole reason why we're able to have any kind of possibility of restoring our freedom and getting our you know to save our constitutional republic is because of people like him People like James Madison audits and, you know, all the others out there, um, Acura Amanda and uh, West Palm Beach Free Press and all of those that are fighting uh, to expose what the government is doing and, and taking videos and taking photographs and putting them out there for the world to see so that the people can see what's going on, what's happening, what's not happening. Um, and if those people aren't doing that, we know the the traditional news and media they're not covering any of that so you know how else is the public going to know how else can we fight back if we don't even know what's at issue here so we can't leave people out to dry you know you can't leave people freedom fighters like Foshin or acura amanda or anybody else who's out there fighting the freedom fight to to fight these battles on their own because they're fighting it for us it's not like it's directly and and personally benefiting him that he's exposing this information or showing what's happening uh, he's doing it because it only benefits him insofar as it's the information is spread and more people know and more people can do something and fight back otherwise he's just wasting his time and his efforts and he's getting a whole lot of aggravation for no good reason <laughs> and in which case he should be making me chocolate chip cookies. So, um, cammed up. Let me see here. Got a comment about, oops, I think somebody else and I were in there clicking on it at the same time. I loved your custom privacy fence. I was there to support you, but had to leave for a family emergency before everyone else arrived. Would have loved to have met you. And thank you so much. Um, I'm sorry. I don't remember what name I was given, but I didn't think I was given a cammed up caveman uh, handle as the description of the other person who was here that day. But yes, it was unfortunate I didn't get to meet you, but I appreciate you coming out. Absolutely. Sorry to hear. I don't remember the exact situation, but some some family emergency stuff. So um, uh, sorry to hear that was happening for you. Uh, but do know that our, oh, we lost Foshin. Uh, do know that our battle is still going on and we still need support in every way and getting uh getting the word out there but at any rate um that was weird that it he just um that potion disappeared there right is it just me i can't hear you oh there he is i was muted that's why okay what's just messing with me lori I was asking uh, Lori if it was weird that it seemed like you all of a sudden you just you were gone again, and then she starts answering without having sound, and I'm like, man, I'm really tripping here today. There's I can't go <laughs> with anybody. Keeping well, you on your toes. Yeah. Um, I think we got um, 
donations to there was a question about donations if you're asking about how to donate to us the easiest way is through restorefreedomkh.com or the give send go that's on our current battle give send go.com slash save henry home but if you're asking about donating to Foshan's causes and all the work that he's doing um i believe you have maybe cash app and some other paypal or something you have some uh financial connections anyway or links right on your youtube page is that correct i do yeah so yes uh if depending on which one you guys were asking about then yes you could go right to his youtube channel this is a public service is his youtube handle so if you go to that um and you can go to i want to say it's like the about page or something that's where you'll find the links to be able to donate or contact him or just get any more information about him um Although you guys can't know his birthday, but I was I was sneaky and I found that on some documents. So now I know. Um, Lori, next year we're gonna totally have to prank him on his birthday or something. We'll have to figure it out. Um, crap! I said that and my birthday comes first. Never mind, Foshin. I didn't say anything <laughs> about that at all. Already invited me over. That's the problem. <laughs> Um, but speaking of pranking, Mike's birthday is four days later than mine. So, I mean, save it all up for him. He would totally enjoy it. Um, yeah, he said, doesn't see, I don't see him commenting anymore. So maybe he would be, yeah, totally. I could talk about him. He's not here. All right. So, um, so Foshan, do you have any more questions, um, for me at this point that, you know, about today, what happened, the process, anything like that, um, Anything we didn't cover? Um, I don't. I don't, uh, I don't think so. Um, I know I thanked you, but thank you again. Um, and you said this very eloquently earlier, but um, I'll just add to it. Um, I don't know who said it, um, but there's 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 fighters, there's people that help the fighters, and then there's everybody else. We desperately need fighters. So that's all I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. So make sure you guys, whether you're watching this live or catching it later, there's always ways to step in and help. Even I know for me, even have an encouraging word. If you, you know, money is super tight. You don't even have $5 to help donate to the work that we're doing or the out of pocket costs that we have in fighting these court battles. I mean, mine alone for my house we're already in the thousands of dollars for court filing fees and transcript fees and everything else. And the case has just begun. My case in Allegan, when I was illegally and unconstitutionally and violently arrested on election day 2020 by ser for serving as an attorney for petition circulators, that case cost me almost $6,000 out of my pocket in almost two years of my life fighting it. And uh, it, it shouldn't be that way. Um, and the $6,000, that wasn't paying another attorney to do the work for me. No, that was with me doing all the work. Those were literal court costs, transcripts, out of pockets. I mean, you name it. So uh, this is something that is, it's big, it's real, it sucks, but um, we're trying to do the right thing. We're trying to fight and we can't keep fighting and draining our resources uh, I know we're certainly not independently wealthy, and I think Foshin confirmed that for me recently, that he's not uh, independently wealthy either. So, um, you know, unless he becomes BFF with uh, Paris Hilton or, you know, Katy Perry or something like that, you guys got to help him out too and uh, and keep the work going. But like I said, even if you can't donate, even if you can help by uh, telling all your friends and family about us, like sending them the actual links to videos or to the subscribe button or whatever, hitting that subscribe button yourself, the notification button, the like button, sharing our posts, sharing our um, stuff on our community feeds on YouTube or posts on Facebook or Telegram or whatever, uh, letting people know about the resources that we have out there. Um, my, my, in addition to all of those things, I, of course, have the website, restorefreedomkh.com. So please check that, that out as well. Um, oh my goodness, I almost forgot to tell you guys. So I had some further communications with our Restore Freedom Constitution app person. And I guess 
there's some issues. I'll just put it that way. And they, they think that I'm, you know, made of money and that I should pay a whole bunch of stuff that was never ever disclosed to me. And supposedly that want they want me to backdate, you know, over a year of what they claim that I would owe them. And at any rate, I can't afford to go into the hole for a constitution app that I've already paid thousands of dollars for. And the whole thing was created just to give you guys a constitution in your hand, no matter where you were, that there was an app way that you could bookmark parts of the constitution, uh, see the state and federal constitution, et cetera. So that app will probably be pulled from the stores. If not, if it hasn't already been, it'll probably be pulled from the Google play and Apple app stores by June 1st. Um, so, I guess if you want to download it, download it now. I can't imagine anything will be deleted, you know, automatically off your phone. I think once it's on your phone, it's on your phone, but you wouldn't be getting any more updates. Um, and um, once we have, uh, once I can finish my website, guys, I will be creating a whole new app, but I've kind of been busy fighting the good fight for quite some time and haven't had a chance to get back to the website. So um, anyway, just wanted to tell you guys about that. Um, so just to be clear to round out what we're talking about with Foshin's case, if you want to support him, you could do so financially. You could do so, um, by subscribing to his YouTube channel, reaching out, giving him words of encouragement. But as far as like, if you wanted to show up to his next court date, we don't know what it is. We don't know if there is going to be one, what it would be for, when, where, how, who would be prosecuting it, what they're prosecuting. We don't know. So I'm sure he'll let us know as soon as we have that information, if they decide to pursue it, we will certainly share it with all of you. Um, as for us, uh, in our Ormond Beach case, we don't have a court date set. We may not actually get to have another court date. And unfortunately, I was not actually given the opportunity to actually argue my motions, even though it was supposedly a hearing on my motions. Uh, we had a, a very tiny W, very small win. The judge said it was pretty much ridiculous for the city to even ask for us to post the $14,000 bond to be able to fight this issue. Um, but she did sever my claims. So all the stuff that I countersued and did a notice of joinder, she severed that. Now, what's interesting is that she didn't provide any rule uh, or statute or case as to why that was appropriate, considering I cited all the rules uh, as to why I was required to put my counter suit and all of my other related requests in uh, at this time. So uh, I asked her to clarify that if that meant the civil rules didn't apply in my case. And she said, yes and no, <laughs> right, Potion? There was no clear answer from her on that either. Um, so um, at any rate, yeah, I don't know. Was there anything else about Friday's hearing, Foshin, that uh, you thought we should let anybody know about? No, uh, I mean, a win's a win, right? It was nice to, it was nice. I, I'm sorry, I was distracted. Somebody pulled into my. I'm stand. I'm at the end of my driveway, and somebody just pulled to the end of my driveway. Hold on. For a second. So, guys, um, while he's, um, are you back? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. Um, I was getting a pie delivered. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm denied chocolate chip cookies from my service today, and you're having pie delivered. When we talked yeah. about Uber Eats a minute ago, it was to get me my damn chocolate chip cookies, not to get you a pie. <laughs> so, yeah, you're, you're, I thought, it, I mean, the case didn't get dismissed, right? But that, that wasn't an option. So, you know, for, for what, for what we walked into on Friday, I think that, you know, the best thing happened, right? I mean, more could have happened, I guess, but the fact that they didn't get to, you know, get a, what was it? $13,000 bond. They wanted $13,000. That's what they mean to charge you for, for destroying your home. That, it, it, <laughs> that's just outrageous. No, that doesn't even include the costs that they plan to add on for them to come and rip up all of our property. They plan to add that on as well. 
as well as more fees every single day. It would grow exponentially. Jeez. So, yeah. So it's and worse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, far worse. Yeah. It was just to date, they were saying it would be $13,670 that I should pay them plus court costs and filing fees and all that. And I'm like, what? I already paid the court costs and filing fees. So double dipping. All, oh, they want me to pay for them for damages for delay because they shouldn't be delayed in ripping up my property and my homestead. <laughs> Never mind your due process, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Jeez. So yeah, so guys, that was that's the status of where we're at on both my case and Foshan's case. And um, hopefully we can have uh, West Palm Beach Free Press join us soon for an update on his case as well. I think he might have an update by Friday um if they're going to continue pursuing his case but i'll have to double check with him and accurate amanda on that um but uh yes this is uh we're going to continue to fight the good fight on all fronts and and something to keep in mind guys and this is something that fosha and i didn't get a chance to really talk about but just to, to a little nugget to leave you all with and to leave him with it's interesting that they wouldn't even give us the information on what they were asking for because for example, the, the prosecutor that was filling in today had no idea what they would be asking for, um, but he said, you know, well, it could be a $5,000 fine. Well, if that's the case, what would they seek? $5,000 fine on six files for a total of $30,000? No matter what, Foshan's never going to take that as a, a sure, I'll, I'll just pay $30,000 for, you know, my First Amendment activities. Um, but there might be some value to um, trying to work out some sort of a deal where maybe he, he pays a $50 fine for each of them and he walks away with, you know, $300 and, you know, maybe even gets a dismissal of all charges and, you know, does pay the 300. But then if in the end it's cheaper than any kind of filing fees or transcript costs or whatever that he would have into it to fight the gas money to drive all the way down into Orlando parking today. I think we might've gotten lucky and didn't have to pay for parking, but you know, there's costs to that. And you just have to determine, uh, you have to, that's why you have to know what are your options and then what is going to be the best fit for you in the end. Now, um, you know, Foshan, just something to keep in mind. If, the prosecutor came to you and said, yeah, we plan on pursuing this, but, uh, you know, I'd like to offer you the chance to pay a small fine and to move forward. It's, it is something you want to keep in mind because even though they're two petty, supposedly petty offenses, um, it's work that it's a charge directly related to the work that you are doing now. And as far as I know, plan to continue doing so you're going to face charges again. I mean, so I, I will likely face additional government BS myself. That's just the nature of the, what we're doing and, and the beast we're fighting. So do you want that as like a little stepping stone? If there's going to be any kind of record that you have been found guilty in any kind of capacity on any of those six charges, uh, it would be directly related to what you plan to do in the future and we'd hate to give them some sort of pattern of behavior to reference in the future so just a thought um but then again maybe it'd be worth the time and aggravation and whatever to not have to deal with it anymore right now and just be better prepared for the next time who knows um if any of you are interested in making sure that Foshan does have ongoing counsel with his freedom fighting work for years to come, and you're interested in securing him a Florida licensed attorney who's licensed in the federal district court. I don't know how much it is, but the last time I took a bar exam, it was 10, 15 grand just to apply to take the bar exam. I'm not worried about passing a bar exam. Nope, I'm comfortable with my knowledge of the law. I just don't have an extra 10 or 15 or $20,000 laying around to take a bar exam. So if any of you are interested in helping the freedom fight here in Florida and helping freedom fighters such as Foshan secure good constitutional counsel, I'm open to taking the Florida bar and getting licensed in the federal district courts down here. Uh, but 
it's going to take uh, a lot of work on your guys's part to fund that and and help things move forward so um any last words there um potion before we wrap up for today no just thank you uh thank you catherine for for what you've done so far i i, I appreciate it more than you know likewise and I, I know we must have lost mike at some point uh shoot he might have been dropped off before you and i hopped on <laughs> for all i know but i know he greatly appreciates you as well and the liberty cause and uh acura amanda and um um what's mark's name i don't know um whatever don't say it don't say it now uh, yeah well at any rate he, <laughs> all those people <laughs> that have been helping um from the Palm Beach Free Press, it, you know, in ways that he's been supportive to uh, James Madison Audits and uh, Rogue Nation or whatever. Anybody who's out there sharing, helping, supporting, sending kind words, uh, funds, anything, we greatly appreciate all of you. So um, with that being said, it looks like we answered all the questions. If I missed one, I apologize. But thank you to all of the those of you who are joining us live on Facebook. YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Rumble today, and uh, who will be joining us later on the playbacks or on podcasting platforms. But thanks so much, everyone. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Join us tomorrow for our Wednesday Way to Get Involved Challenge, Thursday for our 10-minute Constitution segment recap, Friday for our Freedom Fighting Tools, Saturday for the um, way that you can support our work, our Freedom Fighting Restore Freedom goodie, and of course, next week for our next full episode of Restore Freedom Weekly. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day.